All right, Brock the Hawa, Brock the Hawa Sha, Brock the Hawa, Brock the Hawa Sha, Brock the Hawa, Brock the Hawa Sha, call Halayim, Yahawa, Baashem, Yahawa Sha, Baashem, Rakah, Hakwadash, double honor to the apostles, elders, and bishops of Great Millstone, who rule well over the flock of Israel. Shalom, and salutations to Yakim out here pushing the words of truth and sincerity. Shalom to all the elect, Akim, Akwab, scattered Israelites, and Israelite foreigners. I've arrived as this video was edifying, I'll refine my, and today's lesson is going to be on my thoughts about um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? For those who don't know, this is dealing with Daniel's the third chapter. And this is a great biblical story of faith, um, of integrity, uh, loyalty to the Heavenly Father. And um, it's a it's a pinpoint of how not to, um, how to perfectly remember Lot's wife. And so that you don't ever get so caught up into your job, into your position, um, into this world that you forget the world to come is greater than this world. And the one who is ushering in the world to come, Yahweh Shah, is greater than the one who controls the world now, Esau, Edom, so-called white people. And so how this all correlates with these end times and prophecy is that this place is going to be consumed with fire. And these three men who believed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they was delivered through a fire, meaning they went through an actual physical fire. They lived and dwelt <laughs> in a furnace. And so the Most High preserved them. And Yahweh Shah was with them in that fire. Because Nebuchadnezzar, in his own words, said, I believe that that was the Son of Man. But I want to just go through showing you that during that time, it wasn't some ancient or let's say it wasn't some primitive society you know the Ella Aram always based speaks on that and how society you know is views uh biblical societies and ancient societies as primitive sometimes they would like as if they was all in caves and trying to strike fire with flint flintstone and you know fire was made with flintstone back then you know they didn't have a lot of advances in technology but social structures was very much established that's where the system um, establishment of marriages and a lot of things that we have to this day stem back from the ancient world now Nebuchadnezzar um, his gold statue this is the title of Daniel's 3 and I'm going to read from the NLT just a smoother read it says King Nebuchadnezzar made a golden statue 90 feet tall and 90 feet wide and set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon then he sent messengers to the high officers, officials, governors, advocates, advisors, Salaki, um, treasurers, judges, magistrates, um, and all provincial officials to come to the de uh, dedication of the statue he had set up. So it shows you that this is no primitive society, man. This is very built up, established. This is something that you have magistrates and judges right and KJV says sheriffs and counselors right justices and you had a whole society established with the inner workings of the courts high courts lower courts mid tier right all type of officials so Nebuchadnezzar was just in a king format meaning he decided at the end of the day what would and would not be done so this was his setting up of this statue this was Nebuchadnezzar's uh, vision. It says so all these officials came and stood before the uh, statue of Nebuchadnezzar that had that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Right. It says then the herald shouted out, "People of all races and nations and languages, listen to the king's command." And I believe he has some, you know, Persians within his uh, office and things of that nature. So this is in Babylon. This is Nebuchadnezzar, right? So you have plenty of different uh, Middle Eastern, let's say, nationalities uh, present at that time, who, including Israelites who were in bondage at that time. And needless to say, um, when in bondage, right, there's a saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. When you're in bondage, you pretty much are led by your captors to do whatever they tell you to do. This is a state of bondage. This is the state that Israel has found themselves in once more again. That that ancient that ancient Babylonian style captivity, in many ways, is very similar 
um, has so many similarities to this modern day American captivity. Now, you'll find out later as in reading, I'm not going to read in too much, but Nebuchadnezzar, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had official positions, all high positions in this thing. All right. And what they didn't do was reverence their high position instead of reverence the father. Um, yeah, so it says in verse 12, it says, But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the province of Babylon. So they had high up positions. This is not nobody, so, so to speak. But they didn't. It says they pay no attention to you. <laughs> so when he had these um, musicians play the trumpet and all their musical instruments and that the sound of their instruments every every person was supposed to bow um, at the dedication to this image 90 feet tall 90 feet wide they decided not to bow they stood stiffly for the name and that's a reference to the second Ezra I believe it's uh, I butcher where it's at but in second Ezra it references those who the Most High will set crowns upon their heads stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Right? And so, this is the literal standing stiffly in this sense. And we're figur figuratively and literally standing stiffly when we read um, these and teach these teachings online, in person, when we're doing the ministry, when we're feeding the sheep, uh, feeding the lambs watching over the lambs, uh, rehearsing the righteous acts, uh, not going ahead, uh, not being conformed to this world. The scriptures very specifically tell you not to be conformed to this world. Friendship with the world is enmity with the Heavenly Father. If you will seem, if any man desire to be wise, let him first be made a fool. Wisdom of this world is foolishness to the Most High. He has chosen the base things out of this world to confound the wise. And so, as we understand, these men really took, took, um, held it in high esteem and in high importance, this, this, this wisdom, right? And so how did the Lord reward them by when he told them that they would be burned in that furnace and because he was angry, made that furnace ten, uh, seven times hotter than it ought to be. Um, they were preserved with that fourth angel standing in the midst, which we believe was Yahweh Shah, right? And they didn't burn up. Even the men who threw them in the furnace, getting close enough to the furnace, burned up. And then when they came out of the furnace, didn't smell like smoke. None of their clothes was burned. None, none, no, nothing. No fringes. No, they had uh, metries or turbans on their head. None of that was burned. So. <clears throat> What you have is a testimony to the uh, saving grace of the Heavenly Father and His Son, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. See, our power saves. And on that day, Nebuchadnezzar learned um, and a great example of how strong that power, our power was. All right? How strong our power was because the nations don't have a power. All their powers are idols, right? So the scriptures plainly tell us um, why do the heathen rage and imagine a vain thing? The vain thing that they imagine is that they will forever be in power. How will you stay in power when the source of the, your power is our power? See, the only reason you came into power is because our power turned his back on us, being the clause in the uh, in the uh, covenant that if we didn't keep his commandments, he would turn his back. Right, he would stop dealing with it, so he did that. Um, and then we went into captivity under you, and you were used, you nations were used as tools. Nebuchadnezzar was nothing but a tool. All right, his kingdom fell, and the rest of the kingdoms fell. Um, and now it's Babylon, America's turn, modern day Babylon, to fall. And now, when you go into let's see here, Revelations, the 13th chapter, it tells you about that beast that stood upon the sea. And then it tells you about, about that um, beast, right? Because the ancient uh, uh, beast was uh, the Roman Empire, all right? But that beast was uh, taken down, right? A 
Holy Empire, Holy Roman Empire took over. And for a thousand period of a thousand years, you know, Esau, Edom, was subjugated, was subject. He didn't rule the world anymore. That was known as the Dark Ages. But that deadly wound was healed, the scriptures go into in Revelation. And then that beast of the earth came back up again. And then he exercised, it tells you, like he exercised the power of the beast from before it. Verse 11, Revelation 13, 11 says, And I beheld another beast come up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. And this is dealing with that um, ancient Roman um, system that's here in America today, that Republican Democratic system. That goes back to the Plebeians and the Patricians, right? Two horns, all right? You have the Republican and Democrat, all right? For right now on display more than ever because of the election. Um, that goes back to the ancient Roman Empire. This beast is nothing, is is very, and everything similar to the last beast before. It says in it, in uh, two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. That austerity that America speaks with. It says, in the exalt of all the power of the first beast, exercise of all the power of the first beast before him, and cause of the earth and all that dwell. Uh, was dwelled there and to worship the first beast and whose deadly wound was healed and so now you have a situation in which um, the Roman Empire is back again by, via NATO, EU and America and so to, to um, what's, what's happening now is a causing of them to worship the beast and so you got this system this ancient beast system you know how everything was set up with this laws and this legislatures and this you know um it's it, it didn't have kings it had uh, uh presidents or it had caesars who would rule for a period of time and then you know it had congress and it had you know just the nature of the first beast everything about it is exercised in this beast and now to actually worship the beast, just like during as Nebuchadnezzar set up his statue, the image now of this beast is its legislation, is its laws, right? How they frame its laws, how you have to obey them, right? The Greeks made you wear hats and stop worshiping a certain way. Well, in Babylon, America, they're going to make you, they're going to cause all, both small and great, rich and poor to receive a mark, right? And in doing so, you'll be worshiping the beast. So, the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego gives you hope and aspiration that when the Lord uh, gives the spirit of wisdom and stability um, through his wisdom that he gave to his elect, the stability that we'll have in that day will give us the faith needed to um, not take that mark and understand that the Lord preserves in his mercy endure forever. I'll be this out. This video is edifying. Straight to the point. Till next time. Shalom.